Uh, my name is Kyoko Miyake. Um, I'm here at Hot Dogs with my film Tokyo Idols. I'm the Idol. director of Tokyo Idols, uh, having a Canadian premiere here at Hot Dogs. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the documentary is called Tokyo Idols, mm -hmm. right? So why you come up with the idea to, for, to get this production? Um, uh, for me, it so I, I grew up in Japan, um, and uh, growing up in Japan was a very confusing experience for me. Um, and when I became aware of this phenomenon called idols a few years ago, um, to me it symbolized everything that made me feel a little bit uncomfortable about being a girl in Japan. Um, so I wanted to explore um, this cultural phenomenon more. Um, and I became aware that um, it was becoming more and more mainstream, um, a daily broadsheet, you know, like serious newspapers would run a series of articles um, um, about this uh, big idol event uh, called um, annual election of AKB48. They would, you know, um, organize a panel of experts discussing which girls would win, might win this year, and which girl might do a bit better than last year. Um, and it will be broadcast in primetime TV. Um, and um, you know, if a girl would leave um, big idol band, it will be you know, reported as breaking news on TV, and I, I thought, uh, yeah, I, I needed to find out what was happening. So that was my motivation. I see. Uh, I know Japan is famous in, like, artist agency, mm -hmm. right? They created a long time ago, they got Momoe, they got Kenji Sawada, mm -hmm. or uh, even the Snap mm -hmm. the Boys group, right? Yeah. So that. Uh, uh, we know that the Japanese agency is very famous to how to create a superstar. Mm -hmm. right? So now they are, it seems that the age is going down, down to teenagers. Mm -hmm. So that's why you call those idols, right? Mm -hmm. So and you told me it's become an industry. So is it related to the Japanese economy depression or development? Um. Yeah, I mean, it, it is related in the sense that um, a majority of the fans are... They call otaku. Yeah, yeah. And I think it, this is a um, rising phenomenon like coming out of this long-lasting depression. And I mean, it's been going on for more than two decades. So in that sense, it's uh, related. Um, it's also related to the digital technology um, because in you know in the 80s and 70s you know when we had stars like you know Yamaguchi Momoe and, and Matsuda Seiko like these are the stars you only see on TV or go to their concerts a few times a year um, but you can't really meet them but the idols as we now know uh, are the idols you can meet at the handshake, at the meet and greet. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm a bit allergic to something at the moment. Um, okay. uh, so I will repeat. Uh, yeah. So these are the um, idols you can actually meet at the concert and meet and greet. And that's the whole point uh, of the idols we now know. Um, they feel like they are, you know, your friends, your girlfriends, they're the girls next door. Um, and and also um, the digital <coughs> technology makes it possible for many girls who don't have the endorsement of big talent agencies mm -hmm. who can put them on you know big TV programs and you know you you can just start streaming your performance anytime like you don't need that much money mm -hmm. or resources. Um, which is why there are so many girls who call themselves idols. So you mean the social media, the, the technology makes, give them the platform mm -hmm. to uh, promote themselves. Yeah, right? exactly. So, yeah. But the point is that if you look at the, like, uh, mostly the friends are otaku men, mm -hmm. or even middle-aged men, right? So if you look at the, the Japanese development, I believe that most like Japanese gentlemen, they, 
they work in the big corporations and try to move up the corporate ladder, right? And then they have to mingle with their colleagues, try to get promotion. Even they have to, I mean, chat with friends in the in the uh, Isakaya to you know to. But now they they seem they because of the economic depression, they those may not have enough promotion opportunity and they start to project their fantasy on those young girls. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's the, this gap between the economic reality and the, and the ideal, mm -hmm. uh, because there are more and more men who cannot have a secure lifelong employment yeah. like they used to do back in the 70s and 60s. Um, it's quite, you know, like it happens so often that you just have to hop from one insecure, badly paid job to another for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So you can't always fulfill this role of being the husband, being the breadwinner, supporting your entire family yeah. and your wife becomes a house, housewife. Um, and at the same time, there are more and more women who work outside because they want to or because they have to. Mm -hmm. So this traditional idea that man becomes the husband, the breadwinner, and the woman stays at home as housewife, it doesn't really fit the reality anymore. But the ideals remain, mm -hmm. and it, they don't change as fast as they should. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people who are caught up in that gap, mm -hmm. who want to be like that, but can't because of the economic circumstances. So I think this is probably the breeding ground for mm -hmm. this kind of fandom. Mm -hmm. And they certainly can escape into this kind of fantasy world where girls are you know, like girls from the bygone era, they're, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're very kind, they don't challenge you, um, and yeah, they comfort you and heal you and take care of you. Okay, and so they become friends more than, more than friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And a lot of idol songs are about um, men being great the way they are they don't have to change and they should be loved the way they are and yeah so there's a lot of cheering up going on but they're yeah. crazy about the idols they follow the idols everywhere right? mm -hmm. yeah go to every concert yeah find all the souvenirs yeah exactly so they're connected 24 7 mm -hmm. online through twitter and facebook and line and all sorts of streaming platforms but at the same time, they meet all the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the, the relations become so close. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but we look at those like idols. They are they're just teenagers, right? In one of in your documentary, say, even the the mother think about let the girls continue their idol and drop the school mm -hmm. or go back to school. Is it healthy for the the growth of the the growth up period for the for the girls? Um, is it healthy? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, they have their, their school life, right? mm -hmm. their parents, yeah. their family life. Yeah. Now they become a, a star. Yeah. I mean, it certainly gives you a special kind of childhood. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're successful, um, you can go on to become an actress or singer or celebrity uh, and the mothers are pr encouraging their daughters to do this because they you know they think it's it's a um, way to help their kids to fulfill their dream mm -hmm. so they are in it with the best of the intention um, and you know because the idol culture is a microcosm of a wider Japanese society and it is a very sexist society. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, like what, what do, like what do you do? Like you need to make the most of the opportunities you have and if you're young and pretty and you know, um, and charismatic, like, yeah, you should probably make, 
make the most of it while it lasts. So um, yeah, I like I wouldn't personally do that. Uh, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't condone this behavior or this culture, yeah. but um, I also understand why they want to do that. Okay, but you say it's a way to get famous. But yeah. when you look at the AKB 40 annual selection, mm -hmm. they're picking from 300 girls and just get 40 something. Mm -hmm. right? I believe that could be thousands girls want to get into the AKB and mm -hmm. then they fail. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I believe not every AKB girls become the top star. No, no. Right? It's so a very fierce competition. Yeah. Yeah. Besides AKB, that's another girls group in Japan too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even individual like the one you call Leo. Mm -hmm. Leo is one of the independent girls who want to be famous. Yeah. So is it is this healthy for Japanese I mean Japanese country? I mean this kind of industry. Mm -hmm. The idol industry, the otaku, right? Mm -hmm. it, uh, you, you mentioned it's become a mainstream right now, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a business, it's a billion dollars business. Mm -hmm. But is it healthy? I mean, I personally don't think it's healthy, uh, and I personally want to mm. like, that yeah. And I think we should. I think it should change, and I think we should at least start talking about it and mm. discussing. And I think that's that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this film because we are not even talking about it. It's like we don't understand each other. We have negative views of what each other is doing, um, but we don't. It's like we are living, but looking away from each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like even in your documentary, there's one otaku. Mm -hmm. He quit his job. Yeah. And become full time the following Leo. Mm -hmm. So, what if like five years later and then then he. He's 40 now, then he may not get a job in 50s. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so what will happen? Then the government take care of those those people? Mm, no, I don't think so. I mean, like he he's he started his own business, okay. so he is working, um, even though not as well as he thought mm -hmm. he would be. Um, um, but he's, he seems quite enjoying it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's enjoying himself, yeah. and he's definitely happier now. Um, so that's that's his choice, mm -hmm. and there are many men like that. That's it. Yeah. But we look at the idols like lifespan, right? They start maybe ten or or eleven, mm -hmm. and then go up to maybe twenty. Then they have to get away from the idol period, become either become a artist. Or back to the normal people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's a change for their lives. It's yeah, but I think um, because it's socially like widely accepted, um, it's not really stigmatizing. So if you when you quit being an idol at yeah. the age of twenty or twenty one or younger, you can always go back to studies or get a regular job. Um, you know, you're not scarred. Um, at least the ones like we are looking for ex idols who could give us a critical view mm -hmm. at their own experience and we were looking for maybe two years and we didn't find any. They're, some of them are like sad that they had to leave, they would reminisce um, the good old days, but um, yeah, they don't really um, feel they've been victimized by this culture. So when, you f when did you finish this documentary? Last year or this year? Uh, earlier this year. Earlier yeah. this year? Yeah. Okay. So did you follow up with some of the characters in your, in your documentary? Um, your, what's, what's the reason? Like Rio is still performing, and she she had her twenty second birthday in December. Okay. She's still competing all the time. Okay. Um, yeah, um, and the idol while the idol industry is still expanding, mm -hmm. I think it, compared to last year, um, I think it 
like it grew by 30 percent so it's now currently like 1.3 billion us dollar industry yeah mm -hmm. and their question is why only girls no boys um, there are boy bands yeah. and there are also middle-aged female fans for the boy bands so you could say it's a mirror image but it's not really comparable in size yeah. uh, you can probably count the number of boy bands with two hands mm -hmm. and they are mostly managed by one or two uh, the same same agencies um, so it, they are, it, it, they exist, but it's not it's not an industry. The same momentum, right? It's not. It, they don't have the same kind of momentum, yeah. um, and it's not an industry like the idol industry that we we portrayed in our film. Mm -hmm. But also, they are facing the competition from Korea. Yeah, Korea also also got lots, mm -hmm. lots of girls. Yeah. Girls group too. Yeah. 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 But perhaps the well. What I understand also what some of the music um, producers mm -hmm. in Japan told me is that um, K-pop is, uh, they train young girls a lot longer so um, they can dance and sing and they tend to be like tall, you know, long limbed, very pretty girls. They are not the average girls, you know, they are, they look like stars while in Japan the whole point is that the girl who feels like an average girl, the whole point is an, is an average girl trying hard. Mm -hmm. And many producers told me that they deliberately do not take very pretty, very tall girls who can dance and sing because they would intimidate the fans. And fans would also feel, okay, she's very pretty, she can dance and sing, she doesn't need my help. Um, so maybe it said something about the confidence level of Japanese men, but that's yeah, that's what they told me. And you can see, you can see that in you know like the Korean girl pop groups, you know like these are stunning girls, and you know they don't look like average girls on, you you see on the streets while you go to Japanese idol concerts, and you know they just look like you know my classmates girls, or girls yeah yeah. yeah. Average looking, yeah. Okay, uh, last question. Uh, do you get any inspiration while making this documentary? Is that what do you get from this this film? This um, yeah. Maybe um, I at the beginning I was very prejudiced against the fans. I found them a bit creepy in a way. Um, but um, making this film kind of forced me to face men of my generation, I think I, I have a deeper understanding of where they come from and why they want to do this. Yeah, so maybe that was... And the film, we had the... In, initially we thought we would just follow three girls and tell their story, but in the end the film ended up becoming as much about the fans as the girls. And yeah, maybe that was one of the surprises. Are you going to make part two? Uh, at the moment, we don't have a plan, but you never know. Yeah, never say never. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.